still no motors for the CNC plasma machine. Oh, and the winner of the speed and feed challenge from last week, last video, is Josh Martinez with a total percent error of 18, which is the lowest I've seen. Almost dead on. Josh Martinez, give me your email address or address and I'll send you those stickers. Back at it again with leveling the mill. So I noticed that the Superfly, the big round cutter, if you didn't know, it's this thing right here. It spins around, it's really wide. Going from left to right, the leading edge seemed like it was higher than the following edge. So it would get recut as it would go through the part, and that's not good. So I immediately found out that either this thing is off, the little insert here, or the z-axis was out of tram. The thing isn't straight. So with this, I spent a good old $100 on this piece of equipment here to figure out just that. And it's gonna save a lot of time, it's accurate, and I didn't want to machine a swing arm for my dial indicator. So that was the main reason for getting this. After I would have designed it, then machined it, and then put it together, I would have spent $100 of my time. So I got this thing. Okay, it's calibrated. Super easy to follow directions here. Yeah. So let me get this straight. First off, I lowered this down about 50,000, so when the first indicator hit, which happened to be this left one right here, I lowered it down 50, 50 thousandths from where it was at. So it started at about 77 over here, so I lowered it down to 0.27, so that would be 50 thousandths over here. And we are at about 0.23 over here. And then it says to adjust the head until both of these read the same number. So you're telling me that this thing is five thousandths unlevel here. Is that real? That's a lot. It also makes sense. There it is. He's tightening upper screw clockwise, lower screw counterclockwise. So as we tighten it up, maybe we get it straight? Yeah, sure. So I put this I put this one right at zero over here, this one on the right side, just to make things easier. And this one reads just over four thousandths on the zero here. So that means this side is down further than this side by four, just over four thousandths, which makes sense because when I have the superfly, when I cut from left to right with the superfly, I go this way, and that means this the back side of the superfly is at an angle like this and it's gonna recut. So this is sort of making things obvious for me. So we finally got everything set back up, and to get where I got, I checked literally everything. I contacted Tornlock and told him what I had, what I was doing. I checked all the gives, they were all tight. I got as tight as I could and still maintained the correct amount of lost motion in the table axes. I double checked twists in the casting I had. I kept a, I used a 246 block put a dial test indicator in the spindle and ran up and down the sides to make sure they said that would that would show any twist in the casting if there was any uh, there was none there so I told them what I did I told them about the mill turning that I did with the three jaw chuck and this is probably close to I'd say 10 pounds if not more and they said you probably shouldn't do that. Not to mention the safety aspect that's involved with this. That's, I mean, it's scary it's hurling this thing around in a piece of machinery that's not supposed to technically be doing that. So I did what I thought was the right thing. After I tested everything else, I looked at the spindle head casting. Around here to both sides you have three bolts and three bolts on this side. And they're doweled. There's a dowel right here and the dowel right here. I loosened those up and it tapped it to one side to sort of straighten it back out. I mean I kept them pretty tight and then just tapped with the dead blow hammer and 
it worked out perfectly fine. And I told Tormok that's what I did. And they said after I tested and showed them everything that I did, they said that's probably the best way to go about the issue. So that gave me a little bit more reassurance that I did the right thing. Now that we're all good to go, we're going to test this out. So this thing definitely came in handy and it worked out really good. I got it so across this six inches here, um, I think it was just the left side was down just maybe maybe right around a thousandths, maybe a little less than that, uh, down further on the left side than the right side when it's sitting up in the spindle. Uh, I know Tormach says it's, it should be somewhere around six tenths or seven tenths of a thousandths. I think that's okay. The the person from Tormox said that was that was probably pretty good for what all I've done to this machine with the mill turning, which I don't recommend anymore. There's a reason why I stopped doing that. And this is why. <laughs> So I still got a heck of a finish and I'll flip it over and do the other side. So you got this little ridge right here and it is, I mean it looks bad because I had to stop it before it finished pulling out the whole side. So that's why it kind of cut there a few times but that is nearly nothing, nothing compared to what it was. So we'll flip it just like this, we'll keep the left side on the left side and right side on the right side, flip it and machine it that way, same way left to right and we'll see what we come up with after we measure it. So on the fat side here we got 0 0.5996 I set it up to where we would get 0 0.6 thickness on this piece of stock here. So 0 0.5996 that's pretty good. That's on the thick part though. Well what I would call the thick part where the superfly stopped. And on the opposite side of the spectrum here thick side over there or what I would like to call the thick side. We got 0.5987. So a little under on both sides, but still on the left side, we're a little bit further down, which still makes sense, but it's not too bad. That's a lot, a lot better than what it was. So we will roll with that and call it a day. I think, I think it's good. I'll continue to monitor that and modify it as time goes, but I'd say that's decently successful. Now times like this is kind of frustrating because you're not doing anything productive with the machine which kind of sucks but for me it's still fun because I get to rip apart the machine and, and see how it works and see everything that goes in it. Now this is my third or fourth time doing that so it isn't as cool as it was when I first did it but still it's kind of fun to take it apart and see how you can fix it and how you can make it better so that's that's fun for me to do. Now, I wish I could go back to making a few bucks with it, so next video should be just that. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching.